Okay. Um, so we've already learned about one important property of optical systems, which is magnification, right? So magnification is equal to, for a single lens in any case, um, negative, I think so I can actually write here, negative SI over SO. Um, and that allows us to figure out, for example, how much the height of an object is magnified by our system. Um, but there are a bunch of other features that are important for optical systems that have to deal with, for example, how, how wide of an object you can view at one time, um, how bright that object is, what the resolution is, um, what your depth of field is, right? So we're gonna talk about those um, over the next couple lectures, actually. Um, this is gonna take a little bit of time. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about is um, stops of an optical system. So stop, i.e. it's a feature that limits the amount of light that an optical system can capture. So we've kind of created an, an artificial stop right here. Oops, let's move it on its own. Um, but this lens, so naturally if light goes um, outside of the lens, it's not being collected, right? So let's draw some rays. And we're gonna assume that this is a well-designed optical system where light from the object is focused onto the image sensor. So we don't have to do all the other normal stuff with the graphical method where we go through the focal points. Since we know that the, all the light from the object here, object um, is gonna be focused onto the image sensor, we can just draw some lines. So uh, the first thing we're gonna draw is we're gonna draw the line through the center of the lens though, cause we, that tells us where on the image sensor our image is gonna appear. So it's gonna appear right there. And then once we've done that, we can just draw um, all of our rays. Whenever they hit our lens, they go straight to that image. Now we know because we've been doing a lot of ray tracing that this is not how real lenses behave, but this is how an ideal lens behaves. And so we can use it to help, like I said, design our system. Um, great, so uh, in this case, um, our, this first stop here has limited the cone of light that reaches our image sensor, right? So this is the cone of light that reaches our image sensor here. And this app, this stop here has limited that cone of light and it's called our aperture stop. Aperture stop. Um, great. Um, and our, the image sensor in its own way limits the amount of light we can collect because it has finite size, right? So if we look at, for example, this next uh, object, object two here, um, and we draw, again, let's draw our rays at, so these are the meridional rays and the cardinal ray, I believe, the one that goes to the middle. Um, and so these rays now, again, are limited by our aperture stop, and this object is just on the bare edge of what we can possibly see on our image sensor. If we moved our object any farther in this direction, it would come and fall off of our image sensor. Um, and so our image sensor is our field stop. This is our field stop. You can remember that because the field stop limits the field of view. Great, and you generally want your field stop and your aperture stop to be different. And the reason is because if they're not, then suddenly you get things like vign vignetting, which is where um, parts of your image are a lot dimmer than other parts and things like that. It gets kind of complicated. Um, but you get non-ideal imaging if, if that's the case. So our field stop limits the height of a point source that we can view and an aperture stop limits the width of rays that can be collected from a point star. Uh, collected from a point source. So an aperture stop will affect the brightness of an image um, and the resolution and the 
um, depth of what we call the uh, focal depth. Focal depth in microscopes, it's also called depth of field in photography. And the reason that this affects this is let's look at, um, let's clear this real quick. Let's talk about depth of field first. I'm gonna clear these rays and we're gonna start over. Um, I'm gonna look at, first we're gonna look at um, uh, an out of focus point. Okay, so an out of focus point on the optical axis. What's gonna happen is this, uh, with a large aperture stop, what happens is the rays come out of this, this point like this. And then because we move that point closer to the lens, its image is gonna move farther away on the other side. So its image is gonna be somewhere over here, let's say. We're just estimating now. And so with a lot, when we have a large aperture like this, um, the, the out of focus objects are large and fuzzy. So this is, um, this distance here is large, <laughs> is large, right? It, it's this whole disc. Um, because it's out of focus. It's producing this large fuzzy disc on our image sensor. Um, if we were to limit our aperture stop, so if we were to, let's, let's look at blue ray, uh, let's use green rays now as our um, rays that correspond to a smaller aperture stop. So we're gonna really exaggerate it too. So let's say that we're only collecting rays from the middle here. Then suddenly now out of focus objects produce a much smaller fuzzy disc, right? Um, and so when you have a very large aperture stop, you actually have what's called a small depth of field because it things that are not in your focal plane become fuzzy very fast. Um, when you have a small aperture stop, then the opposite is true. You have a large depth of field. Um, so that's why your aperture stop affects your depth of field. Great. Um, field stop affects your field of view. Great, so the aperture stop is very important, which is why your camera spends a lot of time on it. Um, if you buy an SLR camera, you'll notice that it has an iris in there and you can adjust the iris by, um, and that adjusts the f-node. Good, so we have um, two more terms to learn. Entrance pupil and exit pupil. So entrance pupil is the image of the aperture as seen from object. And the exit pupil is image of aperture as seen from the image. And what that means is we have to project our aperture stop through our optical system um, to see what the, what the image looks like from uh, the other direction. So, um, one thing that's useful I'm going to tell you right now, and then we're going to talk about it in more detail later, is something called the F number. So an F number is the ratio of the diameter of light collected to the focal length. It's equal to F over D, All right? So um, I'm gonna mention that as we go along, but, um, but first we're gonna practice our entrance pupil and our exit pupil. And the reason I bring this up now, is because I want you to keep in the back of your head that calculating the exit pupil allows us to calculate our F number. Okay, so let's practice this. So we have our optical system here, and we're gonna use the graphical method with this optical system. Uh, to, to play around with this. Um, and we're gonna try to figure out what our 
aperture stop is and what our field stop is for this optical system. So we have a positive lens one, we have a negative lens two. Here's our focal points for lens one and our focal points for lens two are in red. We have an image sensor and we um, have our object plane over here. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our object plane and we're going to project it. We're gonna use green. Let's pick uh, a point on our object right there. And let's project it through our first lens, right? So we remember the rules of our uh, of doing this. The first thing we do is we always take our, for the graphical method, take um, a, a line from our object and go through the center of our lens and our image has to occur somewhere on that line. So there we go, there's our line. It's a little off of our center, but that's okay. Our lens is pretty wavy. Um, our second rule when our object is um, with, a with a positive focal length lens like this, is we go parallel to our optical axis. And then when we hit the lens, we go through the far focal point. Like that. And our last rule is we go through our near focal point to until when we hit the lens, and then we go parallel. Great. And so all of our rays hit roughly right here. So that is our image. And that's gonna be the object for our next lens, right? So let's do that. Um, our object for our next lens is uh, our image here. And this is where things get complicated because we now have a negative lens, a negative focal length lens, and an object on the right-hand side of that lens. So we have to be pretty careful about how we how we manage this. So um, the first thing we always do is we draw a line through the image, sorry, through the object, um, and through the center of the lens. I'm gonna go in that direction and I'm gonna go in this direction because I don't really know which way we're gonna end up, which side our image is gonna end up on. Although if I had to guess, I'm gonna guess that our image is gonna end up on the right-hand side of our lens because usually with a negative lens, you get um, an imaginary image which occurs on the same side of the lens as the object. So it's probably to the right-hand side of our, our object here. By the way, this is our, our new object right there. Great, so then the second rule is um, we go, I love this, we go, um, we project backwards from our object to when we hit the lens and then we draw from the far focal point through that intersection and come out like that. And our last one is we draw through our object and our far focal point. And our ray goes parallel after that. So our new image has occurred right here. So first off, we learned this is not a very well-designed optical system because our image is occurring pretty far, this is image two, pretty far off of our image sensor, right? So this is gonna be quite out of focus, but whatever. Um, this is still a useful exercise. Uh, and now we can start drawing what our, our paths of our rays of light look like. So um, let's do this in blue. Um, we can draw our, let's draw the, the path of the light that goes to the center of our first lens. So it goes through the first center of our first lens and it continues on through until it towards our object. Um, when it hits our second lens, it starts going, sorry, it goes uh, towards our image. Once it hits the second lens, it starts going towards the next image. So we draw it through here and it hits our image sensor there. Great, now if we do our far rays, our meridial rays, um, this now goes towards our first image like that, 
but we back it up and when it hits our second lens, now it starts going towards our second image. So it's diverged a little bit there, you see. This one does the same thing, goes towards our first image, but then stops when it hits our second lens and starts going towards our second image. Um, cool, and if we extend both of these rays, we see that they produce a fuzzy dot on our image sensor because they're out of focus. Excellent, so um, now we can start seeing some features of our imaging system. Our aperture stop, which limits the cone of light which hits our image sensor, is clearly our lens one. This is our aperture stop. Um, clearly our field stop is our image sensor because as we move this up and down, if we move this object any farther up, this image will come down and it will the light rays will no longer hit our image sensor. So the thing that's limiting the range of heights that our object can take is our image sensor. So this is our field stop. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how we find our, our different stops. It gets a little bit more complicated when you have multiple lenses and you actually have, um, built-in stops where you purposely put the stop somewhere besides a lens, right? Cool, so let's try to find, uh, let's pause there. Actually, we're gonna pause this video and then um, we're gonna practice this again, but we're gonna practice it with um, the thin lens equation to try to find these different stops.